Hola muchachos! Today we're diving into the crazy world of finding your first job straight out of dental school or residency. And I just want to share with you guys what questions you should be asking, how you can better negotiate, and how to position yourself so you can find the right fit for you. If you're ready, let's get to job hunting. into a couple easy steps. Number one is start with your cover letter. Number two is put yourself out there. Number three is learn how to ask the right questions. And number four is kill it when you're negotiating, okay? So we need to hit all of those steps so that you're able to find the right position for you, but also in a way that's really fair to you, okay? So first things first, I would say start early. And not early because I think that you're gonna get a contract right away. I think that a lot of people that are from smaller towns or they really know a dentist from back home, whatever it is, they might have those you know positions already lined up for them by like fall, right? But realistically, if you're an out-of-state student or if you're just going back home, like if you don't have those connections set in, people are probably going to start talking to you more seriously towards the beginning of your D4 sprint, okay? But that doesn't mean you should wait until then to get started. And the first thing that I'm gonna tell you to do is not to update your CV or resume. I'm gonna tell you to make your cover letter. And I'm telling you to make, you know, not just write. This this is like your baby, and this is where everything comes to life. Why? Because you need to almost have like this concise paragraph or two where you're gonna quickly tell an office three elements, right? You're going to tell them why you're special, what you're going to contribute, and what you're expecting from them and their environment, right? What you're ideally looking for. You should have uh, one or two versions of this because you want to have it ready to go and ready to edit depending on the practice fit and environment. So I had um, like one cover letter for smaller practices that were private and then like larger private practices. You also want to think about what you really want. So I met with our practice transitions coordinator and she told me, okay, what are you looking for in your first job? And I said, I really don't know. I'm just happy to get a job. And that was obviously the wrong answer. And she was completely right for telling me to go ahead and let myself want something. This is what I want. This is what I don't want. This doesn't add up to maybe where I see myself in five years. You're not just going out there and I'm just saying, oh my gosh, thank you so much for doing me a favor and hiring me as the little baby dentist that I am. No, you are grateful to receive mentorship. You're grateful to receive a position, but you're also bringing in skill sets. You're also bringing into a practice, you know, new life and blood to their patients and you are providing a service. So you have power in what you do. Don't ever forget that. So, okay, let's say you've written your cover letter, you're good to go, and then you update your resume or CV. Once you do that, where are you gonna put that? Try a couple different avenues and just remember, every single avenue works differently. So you're gonna have probably Indeed. Indeed will have a lot of corporate offices, keep that in mind, but there are more private offices starting to catch up. So make an account with Indeed, put all your stuff on there, let it hang out. I promise you, you will receive messages randomly from people. Another option is LinkedIn. LinkedIn also is a great way to go ahead and put in your information. They also have a cute little badge that you can uh, have on your profile picture that says like, I'm looking or something like that. I'll post it so you guys can see it. So you can also do that on LinkedIn. There's more dentists on LinkedIn now than there were before. But then another great way uh, is hear me out on this Facebook group. So I'm sorry if you're not on Facebook anymore, but groups is really what's keeping Facebook alive. And there's a lot of really cool Facebook groups that show you uh, different dentists that are looking to fill positions for associates. So um, there's two right now that are main ones. One of them is, uh, 
I think it's like dental buyers associates, something like that. And then there's like a practice matchmaker one. If you want access to those two and you don't know where to find them, just send me a DM or like a message or comment and I will go ahead and shoot you over an invite. I don't run any of those. I don't get anything from telling you about them. I just also posted my interest in those groups and I got good feedback and I, I got, you know, uh, access to opportunities that I probably wouldn't have otherwise like in different states that I would have never thought of and it's cool because you can kind of tag what regions you're looking for and people can find you later highly 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 recommend so again if you want an invite to those let me know again I'm not sponsored or anything by them I just use them so and then like the last resort is not a last resort, but I would say the most time consuming out of all of these is making cute little postcards and sending them around into an area that you think you'd want people to know that you're looking. So, I mean, there's Visa Print, Costco, whatever it is that you wanna use, and you can write a cute little bio or anything about your family, etc. Once you put yourself out there, check out every single thing that comes your way. Even if it feels like, you know how we just talked about, like, don't take a job that's not the right fit? It's okay, and I highly recommend going to uh, practices and taking the effort to actually visit with practice owners or hiring managers of positions that may not sound as interesting to you. This gives you an idea and time to practice, to ask questions. So by the time that you get to your like ideal position, you can go ahead and be a little bit more comfortable. I asked a strategic set of questions that told me so much about the practice. Otherwise, people won't tell you. It's like when people have kids and they think like their kid is the best one, that's the same thing. A practice owner is gonna tell you the best things about that practice. So what I would recommend is getting a strategic list of questions that will force them to tell you what you need to know. And I can actually send that to you guys. I'm gonna include a link in the description or there'll be a link in my bio, wherever it is that you're watching this, if you're watching it on YouTube and so whatever, um, go ahead and check out the link in bio description and you can download like a free version of the questions that I use. And those were extremely helpful and especially um, for us, you know, when we come in there and we're so bright eyed and bushy tailed, it's always fun to see them kind of go like, oh, you're asking me that. That's interesting. So uh, definitely do that. When you're trying to negotiate, Please, please, please understand you you do have power. I remember hearing this podcast, and this is for my female practitioners, uh, and it was with the ADA, and it was like Mommy Dennis in Business, I think that's what it was. And she said, oh, well, one of the biggest things I see when I hire women is that when I hire women, they act as if I've done them a favor and they never counter offer. And when I hire men, I always, 99% of the time, get a counter offer. So for my females out there, please, please, please feel like you can negotiate. You want a little bit more paid time off or you want a different kind of salary or a different lab fee deal or whatever it is, then go ahead and do that. If you guys want me to make a video based off of like all the different pay structures or whatever, I can go ahead and do that. Um, but definitely choose something that works for you and keep in mind the questions that you ask them. Keep track of absolutely every office that you talk to and then when it's time to make a decision, you know, always let them know, especially, I'm not telling you to lie or anything like that because you will have offers. I mean, people are dying to have associates. So these are not lies. You will have multiple offers. Leverage your other offers to get you the offer that you want in the location and fit that you want, right? So do things like that. Leveraging is important making sure that you outline and remember, okay, so this patient base is like this. Like for example, I'm bilingual, so I knew that that was an asset. If a practice's demographic really required, you know, uh, a bilingual practitioner, I mean, I saw that as an opportunity to say, hey, I'm an asset in this, in this sense, so like here's where I deserve a little bit more, right? If they give you a range, it's important for you to understand where you fall in that range and have the confidence to stand in your right and say like, okay, this is what I'm good at, this is what I can offer. Make sure you evaluate closely whether you're gonna be an independent contractor or an employee. Um, it's If you're temporarily working somewhere, an independent contractor is like not a bad idea, but when you're actually working somewhere 
five days a week or whatever it is and someone's providing you instruments they're telling you when to come in when to clock out by law you are an employee you deserve benefits you are not an independent contractor do not let anyone tell you any different don't don't let them tell you oh go ahead and open an llc it's fine you can write all these things off yes you can write all these things off but all these tax burdens will fall on you okay so make sure you know what you're getting into and i can do a whole separate video on that as well have so many people review your offer your contract talk to as many people as you can about the offer about the practice it's, it's incredible for months i would randomly like meet up with dennis and just talk about the fact that i was looking and they would tell me horror stories or great stories or whatever they knew about you know the job hunting process it's important for you to understand that it's a marathon not a not a sprint so if you're gonna give up early just because you want to say that you sign a contract you're not gonna be very happy later on so make sure that you're going ahead and you're taking your time that's why I said start early start early and give yourself time if someone tries to pressure you and say well I need an answer by so-and-so date sometimes they're literally bluffing you know they might not have anyone and you need to be able to sometimes make those game time decisions and take risks and say you know what i might not like the fact that this is just pressure and i might lose this opportunity but i'm not 100 sold so trust yourself trust your gut okay don't just take something because someone pressures you into it Overall, this is kind of like that brief overview of how you can get started. If you guys are interested in learning some more negotiation tools, because I saw that in the story you guys actually wanted that, we can do just a negotiation. I hope that that's somewhat helpful. I'm excited to start my own position. And, you know, I will tell you this as a D4, it becomes this thing where you are just like, you you wish you had all the answers and you definitely don't. And everything is just bittersweet. Like you're so excited and happy to have a position, but at the same time, it's like the end of an era and you now have to like come in somewhere and perform. And just know that things will work out. Um, rely on your friends. I just went to breakfast with one of my friends and we we're all just like freaking out. And just know like you're not gonna be the only one just feeling this weird, I don't know, like you're ready to go, you're graduating, but then you just did everything you needed to do finally. And now you're like, well, now what? So just wanted to let you know you're not alone. <laughs> and I hope this is at least someone. If you like this video, go ahead, like, share, and subscribe, follow. If you haven't seen Deco Dental, that's my new baby. It's been around now for a couple of months and we're just now getting into socials, but go to decodental.com to get more info, video libraries, anything you can find. We have stuff for pre-dents, for dental students. So just check it out and share it with someone you know would need the help. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Um, great week if you're watching this during the week. And I'm excited to share my new journeys with you as a, an actual dentist, which is, wow, that's weird. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you guys next time.